Hello, everybody. This is Tiffany with the Speak Up and Inspire series, um, or the SUIS, which is what we're going to be going for in 2021. Um, we're not rebranding, just doing something a little bit different this year. So you'll hear me say the SUIS more often than you'll hear me say the Speak Up and Inspire series, which I will definitely be explaining a little bit more later on. Um, starting tonight's episode or tonight's podcast, we're going to be having special guests at the end of each podcast. You're not going to know who they are until they get on. Um, so hopefully that would be a nice surprise that you can look forward to meeting some great people um, based off of Facebook posts. So basically, I'm going to see Facebook posts that I think are interesting or funny or inspirational or something community community wise. It, it could be anything. And I'm going to invite them to join us at the end of each podcast starting tonight. So I am looking forward to our special guest that is going to be on tonight. They're going to come in hopefully between 8.30 and 8.40 to join us to tell us about something really, really big they're doing. It's a movement in the community. And so I hope that you will stay on so you can find out who our special guest is going to be tonight. So we are going to jump right in it because we have a lot of our guests from 2020 on tonight. And I want to make sure that everybody gets a chance to reintroduce themselves to you if this is your first time watching the podcast. Hopefully it's not. And hopefully you're going to see familiar faces that you love and adore, um, but also that you are following on Facebook, Instagram, and all of your social media. So we're just going to jump right into it. And I'm going to kind of go around and ask the questions or anybody can just pop in however you guys want to do it. You know how I am, very laid back. There's no scripts. We just go with it, have fun, and try to inspire our community at the same time. So we're just going to jump right in. So this is 2021. Happy New Year to everybody that is watching, um, especially our guests. Hopefully this will be a better year than 2020. 2020 was rough. I don't know about you guys, but 2020 was rough. Not just for me, not just for the guests on the show, but for our nation, for our world as a whole. Um, with uh, Mr. Scary COVID-19 out there wreaking havoc on everyone's lives, not just, um, you know, uh, per me personally, I have not known anyone up until three weeks ago that was close to me that had COVID. And just all of a sudden, I had three, four, five friends saying that they either had COVID or knew someone that had COVID. Um, so that hits really close to home. Not that I wasn't taking it seriously before, but that made me take it even more seriously. And thankfully, everybody has recovered and they are doing well. So I just want to give a shout out to those people. I won't say any names, but just to say to you that I love you. I'm glad that you're still here with us. And um, I'm glad that you were able to beat COVID and that you are here tonight with us. Um, a lot of people have lost family members, friends, um, co-workers, you name it, people have lost somebody um, on different levels when it comes to COVID. So hopefully this year will be better than 2020, but so far, as everyone knows, we have the numbers are going back up again, not that they really stopped, but they're skyrocketing again. And um, there's now a new strain of the virus uh, that's going around that is not being picked up on, um, uh, the tests that are out right now. We have a vaccine that's not even touching this new strain of the vaccine. There's just so much going on, so much going on. But that's not what we're here for tonight. Tonight, we're here to talk about some positive stuff and what's going on, what happened in 2020 that was great, what's gonna happen in 2021 that's awesome, and how we can support and love on each other and push forward into this new year. So I'm just gonna go by my list that I see of my uh, guest tonight. So we're gonna start with you, Mr. Rodney McGill. Tell us who you are, who you're representing, and tell us uh, about 2020. Tell us some of the great things that happened for your organization and for you in 2020. I'm Rodney McGill. I work with the organizations, several organizations, CUC 100, 
the um, organizations in and around CUC 100, the Save Our Children movement, and civic communications. And 2020 was a very, very hard year for a whole lot of people, mostly around me. Um, however, what I came to, what I would rather talk about is the grassroots organizations in 2020 was a real strong year for the grassroots organizations because they found themselves um, already being on ground one. Already being on ground one, the grassroots organizations were in position when um, COVID-19 and social justice and these elections and all these different things happened. So 2020, um, to say um, CUC 100, we marked three years, March the 1st, um, where we'll still have our brick and mortar building. That's paying them folks $2,100, $600 in these three years to show that we're a unified force and that we could be sustainable through any weather. So 2021, it's a lot, a whole lot of different things going on, a whole lot of different things. And I look forward to, uh, I look forward to it. Thank you for having this type of show, um, bringing us together, bringing out the positive, bringing out the community. I support what you do. And um, thank you again. Thank you so much, Mr. Rodney. We appreciate you. Um, we're going to keep it rolling. Miss Carla, how are you doing? You have some big news, young lady, to share with us. <laughs> I'm doing really well. Thank you. 20, uh, 2020 was a difficult year, but there were a lot of great things that happened uh, in 2020. I, um, where do I begin? <laughs> <laughs> so I've done a, I've done a lot of podcasts and talks around uh, trauma in children uh, and uh, mental health, and I was just awarded the oh, I have it right here the CIT <laughs> Team Member of the Year Award with the Mecklenburg County uh, Crisis Intervention Team. So I'm still doing, and we're actually uh, we had to pause because of COVID. We're starting back up in February, and this is a really important program with law enforcement. It helps them, uh, the law enforcement officers that take the training, it's a 40 hour training, it helps them to understand what to do when someone is suffering a mental health crisis or a drug crisis. And so instead of some of the things we've seen that happen on the news, it is supposed to teach them how to de-escalate. And so I participate from uh, being on the consumer panel and sharing my story about my son. And then also I work with them in terms of doing role plays so they can get some you know, hands-on experience with how to kind of shift how they're used to handling uh, a crisis and, and to handle it in a way that is helpful, not hurtful. And so we also, uh, during that training, the officers learn um, to how to better handle the trauma that they've experienced. They say uh, police officers experience about 800 different traumatic events, even if it's secondary trauma in their career. And that takes a toll. And so, you know, we want our officers to be healthy mentally and physically. And so the program is, is really um, meant to help uh, law enforcement officers. It could be from the uh, Mecklenburg County Detention Center also. Um, and so that's one of the things that I've been working on. I just actually, I can, I'm a can contributor to, a, yes. I to interrupt you. Please tell me the organization again. It's uh, Mecklenburg County. It's mm -hmm. through the Department of Public Health uh, in partnership with uh, the National Alliance on Mental Illness and it's called Crisis Intervention Team. Gotcha, okay, thank you. <laughs> and, um, and then we just published a book, I'll hold it up. Oh, I don't know if you can see it. Ah, I'll have to come off this uh, background, sorry. Give me a second. Uh, this is the book that I did with uh, 13 other writers in the Charlotte region, and it has a long title. And this is out on Amazon, and it's basically short stories about, um, about the way people are coping with the pandemic. My, I, I have three pieces that I contributed, and they're really around my sons having been the mom of Black sons. And, um, and then there's one that's a little, a little something different from me. I usually talk a lot about 
<laughs> trauma and things is a little spicier. Okay. So, and then, you know, I've been, you know, uh, sharing my book journey to the sun about, you know, my eight year journey to my son who, who has had extensive trauma as a young child. And so I just started writing for adoption.com and as a staff storyteller. And then, uh, lastly, uh, Sometime this month, my TEDx is going to premiere. I did TEDx Charlotte. And nice. the topic is Becoming Trauma-Informed Changed My Life. And so it's all about going really from surviving through trauma to like resilience and thriving. And, you know, how we as caregivers oftentimes uh, deplete ourselves and, you know, how important it is to take care of self uh, to be able to take care of anyone else. Very, very nice, very nice. Do you have a, a copy of your book in with you? In front Journey of you? to the, of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> of course I do. This is, I don't know if you can see it. There yes, it is. You Journey, can see it now. Journey, Journey to, the, to sun. the sun. Yes. Yeah. And so that's my book. And I have a children's book, a children's journal in the works that I'm that I'm planning to publish this year. I, uh, my target, and I'll tell you this real quick and then I'll be done. My target is children who uh, may or may not be in the system, but specifically children who are in the foster care system. Uh -huh. uh, the, most children go to three different homes in their first year in foster care and they lose a lot of self and a lot of their belongings. And so there's so much change and a lack of stability, I wanted to provide something that belongs to them that they can capture feelings and things. And my 10 year old is my co-author. So he he is approving everything, including the characters and the content. Wow. Yeah. That is exciting. So, yes. Yeah. That is really so, exciting. Thank that you. Is really yeah, I'm really excited. And that it's a, it's a great coping mechanism for me. I would encourage everyone to write, I, if you use app, your notes or your handwrite, I just feel like it, it's a great way to release. Gotcha, gotcha. Nice, very nice. Well, um, I would like to give away uh, a copy of your um, book, Journey to the Sun at the end. So we'll be watching for Absolutely. people that are commenting and I'll pick somebody random from one of our listeners to get a copy of your book. So. Awesome. Um, make sure we That'd be great. Don't don't let me forget. Don't let me forget. I won't. I won't <laughs> let you forget. Okay. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so we're gonna go to Miss Lily next. Hello, Miss Lily. How are you? Hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me. I'm doing well. <laughs> good, good. Tell us what's going on out there. Wow. Well, it's Wilmington, North Carolina. So I mean. You know, just being compared nationally to that little facetious coup attempt that happened a week ago. So right now we're kind of hot topic and we're not trying to be, but historically it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. So tell us who, who you're representing. I am actually representing, um, again, uh, Wilmington in general. Um, I am a co-founder of the Lowercase Leaders, which is a nonprofit that literally formed from the part of a protest over the summer. Um, we are part of the community. We walked with the community. We fought with the community. And we were born from the community. Um, we actually have a board meeting this evening. Like I, when I get done chatting with you guys, we're going to run upstairs and have a board meeting. So like the board says hello, and we love you guys, and we appreciate your support. But also in that same hand, I myself, um, Lily Nicole Nichelle, consultant, have been working independently on a uh, Cape Fear comprehensive community violence prevention strategy that just went live um, Friday. And we went into detail on Monday where I was leading a discussion and an explanation on a proposed strategy to attack and literally tear apart um, racially motivated structural violence here in Wilmington, North Carolina. So I've been wow. doing research, you know, I, I like fell off the grid in October, you know, got some alleged legal fees and things and all those things happening, but I've been working. Um, I've always said that you've got to do community education and outreach. So through the education portion, I have been fortunate enough to partner up with some key figureheads in the community. And we've been working with the CDC and some other very, very 
lettered officials and we've been drafting a policy. And if you guys are interested, go to sakotahouse.org. That's our website under latest news. There's a link directly to our violence prevention strategy. And so when I tell you there's another way to protest, you don't have to stand on the street corner. I love that. I will always flip a table. I will run up in city council if I need to. <laughs> also like, like we're serious about community education and I, um, I, I, we have something on the cuff. We have something on the cuff. So we're like, we're still here, man. We're still here. Very nice. Very nice. Um, please spell the website, please. Yes, definitely. S-O-K-O-T-O house, H-O-U-S-E dot org. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Awesome. Well, thank you. Um, I'm so glad to see that you're feeling much better and that you are staying active. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I am healthy. I am out here, still here. Like I said, still fighting. Good. Um, we actually have our own coffee shop that we started. And I remember over the summer, we said we were going to get a coffee program started. And we have our profit program. So we're going to be having our Yay. own in-house coffee program over on the <laughs> South Side. Come through, get a cup. <laughs> um, nice. so like, like the first of many things that we said were going to happen. Like it's, it's, it's coming into play. And like we're really excited about 2021. I'm sure you are. You have a lot to be excited about. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Who would have thought that me and Cedric going on vacation would have fostered this like phenomenal Crazy partnership? <laughs> oh no, it's a beautiful partnership and I love it. I love growing with you. I love following. I love being able to touch base. Like I feel like every time I get to call you and talk to you, I'm like, hey, guess what? We're doing something different. And yeah. I don't know. It's it's good. I love it. And it's so much positivity with you, man. I love it. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. So for everyone who doesn't know, um, Cedric and I had gone to Wilmington on vacation and it literally probably rained every day that we were there. <laughs> um, but this was right after, and I'll let you tell what y'all were protesting about at the time. Um, it was right after the nation uprise with uh, George Floyd. It was an African-American gentleman who lost his life at the hands of police brutality on live cameras, recorded TV, internet, like the world saw. And for just under nine minutes, the world cried. And we were activated as minority populations, as African-Americans, as people, myself who has had interactions with the law and my father's a cop, like we were mad and our city failed us and our city had no answers and so we took it personally because Wilmington North Carolina has a very violent racial history that for so long it ignored and when I say so long um, they didn't acknowledge racism as a public health crisis until a month was it like two months into it? it's like July 13th is when we got a declaration and then a month after that they gave us a rise together initiative which was a nod for a solution and this was after we had been protesting since May 31st so we took it personally and um, the community came together and we bonded together and we fought together and we bled together we got gassed together <laughs> real crap we got gassed together like oh my goodness. Oh, like ridiculous here in this little like white cracker town we got gas <laughs> oh no yeah so yeah so Cedric and I were on vacation we saw them protesting very peaceful um very non-violent very family oriented um and we said you know what we're gonna stop I was a little hesitant because I've never <laughs> done anything like that before even and honestly never even wanted to be a part of anything like that but um, we did stop and I'm really happy that we did because we learned a lot. Um, we met a beautiful person. We met a lot of good people and um, we've just been following um, Miss Lily's progress with the lowercase leaders. When we met, they were not a nonprofit yet. They had their nonprofit status within a month. God bless. So um, it, it's, it's awesome to see the improvement and how far um, the lowercase leaders has come and all that you're doing. Um, I could have sworn I saw on your Instagram page, because we're talking about new stuff, that yeah. you were in a movie or a production or... <laughs> <laughs> so before the world shut down, like, I forgot I had a career, like, once upon a time ago. And, like, I mean, pre-protest even, like, I'm talking, like, when COVID shut the world down, um, I acted, like, I, I was an actress. <laughs> and um, over, like, you know, the COVID quarantine and stuff, I was fortunate enough to get cast in Love Life Entertainment. Um, Nakia Hamilton, shout out, Red, I love you. I was a supporting actress in Mother's Day Dinner, and it's coming out soon. 
And um, it was a blast. We were on set for a week, shut down. Like I'm talking about like, nope, we, we, we weren't coming going. We were working 15 hours a day and it was thrilling. And um, yeah, so I got, I got a film coming out. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I saw it. I was like, wait, she better say something about this. <laughs> yes, if she doesn't, <laughs> then I'm going to say something about it. So it's called The Mother's Dinner. Mother's Day dinner. Mother's Day dinner. Yes. Mother's so dinner. I saw the photos and I was I was stalking it. So <laughs> yes, everybody, make sure that you check it out. Mother's Day dinner. Make sure you check that out. Um, okay, great. All right. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. So did not mean to skip over our duo that's on with us, but I wanted to make sure that I got them on um, at the same time. So Miss Chloe. Olivia and her mom, Miss Yvonne, are on tonight. And let me see, probably the best way is for me to do gallery so that we can see both of you. There you go. So um, we have Miss Chloe on, and I'm going to let Miss Chloe tell us who she is, if you don't know already. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's up, guys? Um, my name is Chloe Olivia. I am 16 years old. I'm a singer, songwriter, anti-bullying advocate, motivational speaker, actress, MP Annis. Um, I've been doing this for probably about the past 10 years now. Um, and I started off um, actually with community service. I started off playing at the Ronald McDonald House up in Rochester, New York. And then when I came back down here to Charlotte, um, I just kind of started like going from there. Um, but really my whole entire, um, I have, I'm, I'm the founder of an organization that we have. Um, called the Chloe Olivia Foundation. Um, we started it in my eighth grade year, but we were doing events um, prior to that. Um, so basically it just kind of like got inspired by my, uh, my story with like bullying and my struggle with that. Um, the first eight days of kindergarten, I got called fat. My parents went out and took care of it. But by the time I was in fourth grade, um, I was kicked, I was slapped, I was punched. I was pushed up against the wall by a teacher. I was told by a Caucasian kid back in the day, you would have been my slave. Um, another kid uh, pointed to a, picture in um, one of our books. It's actually called um, The Old African um, by the Pygmies. And basically um, it was a picture of a slave that was, you know, his hands were tied to a tree and he had whiplashes on his back. Um, of course you had the master and then all the slaves that were watching him. And I showed it to my, um, my, the, re my the rest of my classmates. And I was like, guys, this is, this, this is so sad. This is in my fourth grade year. Um, they're like, yeah, it's sad. And this guy points to it and he's like, Chloe, that's you. So then I tell the teacher, she's like, oh, he's being a typical 10 year old. So there's little things like that that's been happening um, over the course of years and fourth grade, um, I actually, I contemplated suicide, um, but I never, you know, took action upon it. Thank God I didn't. Um, I didn't let my parents know until three years later. Um, and ever since, you know, drop, uh, not dropping out, but I got homeschooled the latter part of my fourth grade year. Um, after getting homeschooled, I was just like, you know what, I'm not gonna let them affect my education or my, re my education my reputation so I went back to the same school and I've been pretty much you know fighting for um, people who you know get bullied and people who are victims of bullying and different things like that ever since um, about fifth grade so I've been doing that for yeah for a very long time now so um, very 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 excited I have a journal that is coming out soon um, I wrote it like the end of last year but I have a 30-day journal that's coming out and basically there's different prompts um, you know, of, about bullying and about um, uh, social injustice, um, you know, self-awareness as well, because sometimes we're not aware when we're bullying. I know there have been many times, many, many times that I have made mistakes, you know, saying the wrong things in the wrong times to the wrong people. Um, and so definitely it is a journal about, you know, kind of like self-awareness, like, wow, am I really bullying this person? Or wow, did I say that? Was that right? Was that wrong? Um, and just kind of causing you guys to think and just taking your time thinking about it and writing about it so you can understand it more. Nice. Um, I know that we had uh, you and your mom on and your mom was really telling us about your story too and how you got into becoming an advocate. Um, and then I know that you uh, have, um, is it 
dinner every year with the kids or you do a trip every year with the kids. And so yeah. that's how um, Heaven, my daughter, was able to meet you, which I really appreciate it. I think it's really important for kids, especially ones who have been bullied like your, yourself and my, and my daughter in school, for you guys to be able to come together and kind of share your stories and empower each other. So I really appreciate you doing that for her and so many other kids out here who have been bullied. Um, and not just kids get bullied. I mean, adults get bullied too. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's just really interesting to see how bullying has evolved from when I was in school to now. Um, kids have always been cruel in school. Mm -hmm. You know, they oh, talk yeah. about you, they say little silly things and, and, and a lot of times they do it on purpose to hurt your feelings or to you know, mess up your reputation, so forth and so on. But you don't realize how cruel kids can be until it's your own child. Um, mm -hmm. And it was really hard for me to see my daughter being bullied. She's such a beautiful girl, but she she's a little socially awkward. Um, but she's a beautiful girl, and she's she can she's outgoing once she gets to know you. So whenever someone is different, that's usually the target for being a you know for being bullied. I've learned that. And I'm sure you'll agree, um, you know, even if it's just the color of your skin. So I tell my daughter all the time that you're different and you're silly and you're, you're goofy and you can be weird sometimes, but that's what makes you beautiful and to be proud of that. So um, thank you for having that platform and having um, the Chloe Olivia Foundation, because um, it's really important. It's really important. Um, Want to hear from mom. Mom, tell us. Tell us, you know, what your experience has been as a mom of this superstar <laughs> and wow. how you've been supporting her, you know, as a mom and, you know, going through what she's been going through. Listen, it's been, um, hmm, I am my children's voice. Do you know that a lot of times kids go through certain things, but they're not allowed to speak they're not allowed to share their side of the story. They're not allowed to explain what happened. So guess what? I became my children's voice. And I, I, I tell that to a lot of parents that I meet, we have to be our children's voice because if not, they'll be left with, you know how they say the unspoken word is the ones that's wrong, you know, but I, that's not the same case here with me. So I am my children's voice. And um, as she shared her story, um, we went through it from kindergarten. It's, there's no age limit on this bullying. There's no gender on this bullying. Um, and like I said, it started from kindergarten. A teacher even grabbed her and pushed her up against the wall. Um, so there was a lot of stuff that happened. Let me emphasize that there were um, Caucasian kids that was saying, like she said, back in the day, you would be my slave. Another one pointed to a, the slave saying, you should be that slave, which was tied to a tree and whipped. Mm -hmm. um, and whenever I would go out and talk to them about it, they always seem to flip the switch, you know, flip it around, make it seem like it's the other person's fault. Mm -hmm. That's when I had to learn that we had to know our children so well till we know when they're telling the truth and when they're not. And that's one of the things that I instill in my children. I don't care if... Um, it was your fault. You're going to tell me the truth so that when I do go out there and face the people of other color to talk to them about it, I know that I'm standing up for you in the right way. So that's one thing that I really impressed upon them is to make sure you always tell me the truth so that when I fight for you, I know I'm fighting for you in the right way. Um, and that's as parents, we need to um, make sure that we know our children. <clears throat> It's a hard place to be in. It's a, hum a, a humbling place to be in. When your children are being bullied and you feel like you have no outlet, no recourse, um, no one is listening to you. Um, it's always their fault and not the other kid's fault. And did you know that if a child retaliates against their bullies, they're just as much at fault as the one that are bullying them? That, that is, and, and I'm, I've been contemplating and racking my brain about coming up with a law, um, some kind of law that would separate the two. You know, I, I, it's unfair that if I go through all these days, weeks, a month, however long it is, and the one time I say, don't touch me, and all of a sudden I hit you 
I protect myself, defend myself, then I'm in trouble. So, you know, we're working on something like that. Um, I, Tiffany, you mentioned, um, the, it was, it's called the Beyond the Bullying Weekend Getaway, um, yes. which is what we have. <laughs> Um, we this this would have, this would have been our third year that what we do is we select 20 to 30 kids from the community um, used with community donations Facebook donations to GoFundMe and we take the kids away for a full weekend getaway absolutely free we don't want the parents to have to come out of their pockets with anything because it's already stressful enough for them to you know have a child that's being bullied I know very well. Um, and we take them away to a hotel. We try to get some of the best hotels. We had Hyatt Place, we had the Marriott um, that uh, had sponsored and we do fun things. We took them horseback riding. Um, we've done pool parties. Olive Garden was one of our sponsors. If you look on my page, you'll see where I posted. Olive Garden was one of our sponsors. They sponsored 36 of us to come have a full sit down dinner. And at that dinner, we called in some of our community um, uh, what was it? Who was it, Chloe? London Tucker, which was Miss Junior North Carolina. Um, Naomi. Miss, yeah, it was Miss. Um, like my mom was saying, Miss North Carolina Teen, um, which was like she said, London Tucker, and then um, her sister came as well, which was Miss North Carolina, and then Miss, I believe Miss Tennessee. Um, Naomi, Naomi Colleen Hall. International, yes. And yeah, Miss North Carolina International, and now Miss Tennessee. Yeah, nice. so we bring people in like that. They were dressed in their gowns. I mean, they poured into the kids at the dinner. They inspired the kids. And we also have a rap session um, where, you know, what it said, what's said in this room stays in this room. So we have a rap session where the kids can just pour their out their hearts and talk to us as adults. We have a mental health coach, which is Vanilla Mackey. We have a guidance counselor, which is Lana Johnson. We have a bus driver and a minister, which is Regina Cohen. So we have people that will um, help in crisis. And we've had some crises that have broken out some, you know, so, um, you know, some kids that were just broke down. So we have all the help that we need to help these kids. kids. And then this year, um, because of COVID, we had to come outside of the box and think of something different, um, which we had Toyota sponsor, um, CC's Pizza sponsor, and then the community do, um, donated as well. So what we did was we took the kids individually. They spoke with Chloe. Um, this is what Tiffany was talking about. Chloe called and spoke with them to find out what they wanted to do, what they wanted to do that they've never done before or that they've just been desiring to do. And that's what we did for each kid individually because of COVID. So we would take them out. Um, I think I uh, Haven wanted uh, sushi. Yes. So <laughs> her, sushi. I didn't eat sushi, but she ate sushi. <laughs> so she was able to get all the sushi she wanted. Then she went to bubbly tea. I think it's bubbly tea. Yes. So it's just doing things like that. That's going to uplift the kids and inspire them. Let them know that they're important. So, and um, we're, we're doing a lot more stuff with, um, her foundation, we have a website up and coming um, and we're in the process of doing a, um, a cotillion. Uh, we wanna do a cotillion with our young people that are being bullied, um, low self-esteem, suicidal. And so um, we've been working on that and having meetings with that. So we postponed it for a little while due to COVID, but that is one of our biggest goals that we wanna do is dress our kids up and let them feel very special, so. And she went away. There she go. Yeah. We sorry. should talk. That's awesome. <laughs> I had to go and let's talk. I knew yeah. it. Mom I knew. Mode for a second. Sorry. <laughs> so I also have a son. Yes, Carly. Yes, we would definitely. Um, I can give you my information, and we could definitely reach out to you and speak with each other. Um, my my son. I have a twelve year old son, uh, and I, I need to say this if you can permit me, Tiffany, because yes, go ahead. it had. It, it happened just before COVID. Now, um, I am one of the mothers of a collaboration of a book called The Boy Book. If, it's, if you go on Instagram, it's the underscore, the locate um, underscore boy book, the boy book. And it's a collaboration of moms who have gotten together and told their stories about their son. Um, it came from Sherilyn Bennett, who um, is an, uh, a, a graphic designer, how her son um, was called boy. 
and God gave her this idea of the boy book and it's a collaboration of different moms. So my son is 12 years old and, and he is an A, A plus student, uh, always stayed on honor roll. Any teacher can tell you, very respectful, very mannerable. See, my, my daughter's agreeing. He does what you tell him to do. So just before COVID hit, a boy, a Caucasian boy, wiped his snot on my child. Okay, John oh, John chasing him <laughs> to get back to exactly to get to get to him, and the teacher called him and said, um, "What are you guys doing?" So John John said he wiped his snot on me. I would be two, and the teacher did nothing except said told them to go sit down. They oh, were about okay. to leave. <laughs> they were about to leave. This is where I say you have to know your child. You have to know whether they're telling the truth. So they were leaving. At the door leaving, the boy did it again and he ran. And he ran and hid behind um, the staircase. So John John ran, chased him, of course. Who wouldn't? And he mushed him up inside the head and said, don't do that. Well, the little kid goes to the teacher, tells him that John John hit him. So now John John is suspended. Why is he suspended? When I get to the school, I, when they call, I said, well, I'm on my way out there. They said, well, you can come, but nothing's going to change. Wow. I go out there and we're sitting with the teacher, not the teacher, the um, guidance counselor and the principal. And they're telling me all this stuff that Jonathan did. And they, when, when, one of the things they said was that Jonathan maliciously intended to do bodily harm. Those were the exact words they used, was that he maliciously intended to do bodily harm by mushing this kid upside the head. Really? And there was really? nothing when it came to this Caucasian boy wiping his bacterial snot on your son two times. Nothing. So, and then that, that was my thing, what he did, da, 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 da. but John John maliciously, I can't talk about the other kid, they said, but what I'm telling you is, I said, no, we can't talk about Jonathan without talking about this. Right. This is what took place, which led him to do this. He's been in this school since third grade. He's now in sixth grade. You tell me what incidents have you had that would make you believe that he would maliciously intend to do bodily harm. Then they started using him as the offender. Wow. First of all, my husband went off and said, we already have a bad enough stigma behind us as black males for you to mm -hmm. come and say offender. So anyway, it just went from there. Yeah. Um, Jonathan was, a, was, was um, uh, suspended, never been suspended. He's in seventh grade now, but guess what? This is the clincher. The white kid who started it and did all this to him, he got to choose whether he wanted a day or uh, um, uh, he got to choose whether he wanted to have in school suspension. He got to decide whether it was in school suspension, which means he get to go to his class and still have his class. He just missed out on lunch. Or if he wanted to stay after school for one day and his mother, his parents pick him up late, he got to choose. My child didn't get to choose. So uh, now me. Mm. <laughs> okay, mom. So <laughs> was where where did you where did you go with this? So um I went to a board meeting. Well, they, you know, they have certain steps that you have to take. Yeah. Went to a board meeting. Of course, the board meeting is not gonna say anything. I spoke with one of the um deans which had just left, and she told me all the steps and told me how wrong it was with how they handled it. So I went to a board meeting. Um, they listened. That's all they did was listen. And they told me that, excuse me, I needed to do a, um, 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 a grievance. I had to file a grievance, which I did. Meanwhile, by that time, COVID had hit. Um, I have not heard from anybody. This was in March. So I have been in the process of looking for someone to take my case. Good for you. Uh, take my case. And I'm still looking. I, I, I still need someone to take this. I can't let this... Um, get away. I can't let them get away with this. And you so should. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and, I, and I don't want someone to take my case. I have letters from certain people that um, talks about him as his, uh, his character. Um, <clears throat> and um, so that's pretty much where I am. It's, it's his story, his full story is in this book called The Boy Book, um, coming out Martin Luther King's Day, July, January 18th. Um, however, it, it really messed it really messed with me when I tell you as a parent of course. It, it was just <clears throat> I, I, I don't know I don't even know how they say it but yes we're in the process of dealing with that so this is where I say we have to be our children's voice they would not allow him to speak they would not allow him to say anything and all they did was took this boy's word for it and um, there was mm -hmm. someone else there that witnessed it and when they called them, they called me back and said, no, well, he said he didn't see anything, but this is the thing. The boy he talked to is our cousin. So he told me, no, I told him da, 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 da. So it's just, it's a lot. It's a lot. But I, I think that uh, my husband and I, we, we won't sit down until something is done. And they had the decency not to even respond to our letter. And well, that was a couple of months yeah. ago. So. I mean, I feel like that whole situation again like one thing that's really i i absolutely hate with the passion because i had to deal with it and john john had, had to deal with it you see it in movies you see it in tv shows but like the first person to go up to them and tell them that's who they're going to believe and I, I i i literally hate that but that's like how the school system is so like the first person to go and tell like they're going to believe that person no matter what they're going to always be biased no matter how bad they want to control they're always going to be biased bias and we I mean we've all done it and so I feel like that's just absolutely wrong instead of hearing both sides of the story because I know who he is my mom knows who he is a lot of people who are around John John's never been suspended I've never been suspended there was a time they tried to su suspend me for the same thing hitting somebody back and I told them I kept a track record John John has kept a track re record of everything that's happened since kindergarten mm -hmm. I still have my kindergarten report cards so uh, a lot of people, I, I think that there, there's a lot of things wrong with the system. Yeah. I think that's just definitely one of them. Well, I know as a mom, mm -hmm. and I, I, I've been watching uh, Ms. Carla's expressions, listening to the story. <laughs> um, <laughs> as a mom, please let us know what we can do to help. Um, definitely would encourage you to reach out to some news outlets and talk to them about it, um, especially the local, local news. Um, and definitely reach out to more to more people to talk about it and get it out there um, because that that's unacceptable. And that just lets this child, Caucasian child know that he can continue to do these kind of things to people, whether they're African-American or not and get away with it. And that's, that's not okay. And for your son to have that on his record now, hopefully that will be taken away once you fight for him, but that's just unacceptable. And anything that we can do to shed some light, I know Miss Carla, I'm not gonna speak for her, but I just know her. I know that she can help, she will. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put her out there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, and I wanted to, I also wanted to say that um, as you were talking, of course I was, you could see my facial expressions. It was obviously very upsetting but it, it made me think a lot about, you know, children and trauma. And while I talk about my son and it's from, you know, the foster care system and, you know, gener intergenerational trauma, I would still say like what Chloe's experienced and what your son has experienced. I mean, that's some level, that's some type of trauma. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that, um, that I've learned as I become trauma informed that that one of the most important things for a child that experienced trauma, that has experienced trauma is to have that loving advocate, even one. And as you were talking and, and I heard you're like, I'm not taking this, I'm not accepting this. I was like, yes, yes, she is. You are that advocate and who, you know, who supports your children and supporting ch our children doesn't mean that our kids are never wrong. Right, right, right. It doesn't mean our kids aren't wrong, but however, our kids deserve the same consideration and the same level of support as any other child. Absolutely. Period. That that's just it. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. So I am all I am too one of those mothers, and I've had to learn to try to do that for myself too. Because see, I'll go to bat for my kid. 
I have to do the same thing for me. And that's, that's a lot of what Rodney does with CUC 100 and a, a number of the organizations that he works with, you know, um, advocating for children, but also for the community as a whole, for our community as a whole, because, you know, there is inequity that exists, whether it's in the school system, you know, there are so many different I guess areas we could look at where inequity exists and we deserve better and who better to speak up than us. Right, yeah, right. Absolutely. definitely, definitely. Um, I know that um, Lily, I remember last time we talked that you were doing something for the children to talk to them about advocacy and so forth. Um, can you tell us a little bit how that's going? Um, well, I remember over the summer we were having our morning programs where the youth was coming down in different age groups uh, because of COVID. You know, we were having a socially distant hour where the smaller, younger grade school kids were coming out. And also because there wasn't a school in system at the time or in play, there was a lot of time on people's hands. And then from the um, mid afternoon into the early afternoon, like the early evening hours is when we were focusing like on the college age crowd. And we would have actual speakers come out and engage, but also Tim, um, lowercase leaders, president would have actual advocacy classes or ally slash advocacy classes where we not only spoke to you know like our community itself but also the people who were trying to be allies and like started those conversations and understanding why you were out there doing what you were doing and how you can safely move forward um so that was something that we spent a, a vast majority amount of our time because again like our entire commitment was community education and outreach and you you can stand on the the corner of the street yelling and screaming but a protest without a purpose you know it's literally pointless so not only activating ourselves physically but activating ourselves mentally was a huge huge focus for us very good and I like that you said uh, mentally as well because um dealing with trauma dealing with bullying dealing with the pandemic dealing with all of these things will really tax your mental health um, and so that's why we ex we um, expressed so much last year about self care and taking that time for self care because self care is so important and especially now everyone is going through something. Yes, everyone, no matter what your race is, no matter how much money you make or used to make, because a lot of people went from here to here very quickly. Um, so mental health is definitely um, on the top priorities for um, us to continue talking about because it is so, so, so important for us to mentally keep ourselves in a healthy place and to recognize when we just need to just say, you know what? I got to take a moment to take care of myself. And I know that's hard. We're all busy people. All of us on here on the platform tonight, we're all busy people. I thought people call me a Jamaican and African and a Mexican and all that kind of stuff because I'm doing all this stuff, not to say anything racially, but just because they they have that uh, that that behind them that they do so much stuff. They have their hands in so much stuff. Um, and, you know, that's life everyone's life is busy. I don't know anybody that doesn't have something going on otherwise than their nine to five. Everyone's doing something, whether it's their own business, whether it's crafts, whether it's starting a nonprofit, writing a book, singing, whatever it is, everybody is busy. And even if you don't have those things going on, you have a family, you have kids to take care of, you have a household to manage. So mental health is so, so important. And going back to what Ms. Carla said about, um, you know, being trauma informed, that is so, is so crucial when you've dealt with a lot of trauma in your life. Even, if, even one instance of trauma can cause PTSD, can cause mental health issues, can cause so many, so many you know, uh, effects to your life. Just one thing that's traumatic in your life. Um, so imagine having the bullying and you know, people talking about you behind your back or, you know, people, our neighbors getting killed because they're a black man or something like that. There's just so much stuff that's going on today that mental health is so important. Self-care is so important. So thank you for bringing that up. Thank you for bringing that up. It's, it's so important, so important. I can't stress that enough. Um, Mr. Rodney, what are some things that you do to advocate for kids? 
while we're on the subject? <laughs> well, the first thing I would say that we do to advocate for children is put them in position to succeed in a business and in, in a business form. And I'll say it like this. We, we talk about youth more than children. Um, and so I'll say this, our president of CUC 100 is 23 years old, um, black man. Our chairman for CUC 100 is a 23 year old black lady. And our co-chair is a 14 year old black lady. Along with that, we have nine junior executives who are none of them are older than 16. So um, we start a lot of the businesses, um, look to promote the business. Um, when we get them together on business, they seem to take a um, life of their own. We just, you know, we just fall back in the in the background when it comes to the youth and just look look um, to promote whatever they want to do. Very nice, very nice. Um, I know someone that's not on the panel right now, but um, Miss uh, Khadija. Um, that's, I know that's our chairman. Yes, so I know that she has a program now that's um, that's working on helping youths become entrepreneurs, business owners. Um, yes. yes, yes, yes. So we're all connected in some kind of way here on this platform. <laughs> some kind of way we're connected in some in some way, shape, or form. So we've talked about 2020. We've talked about the the present. What's what's happening in the future? What's something big that you can share with us that's going on in the future in 2021? And anybody, I'm not gonna say anybody specifically. I'll go if nobody say nothing. Okay, go ahead, Roddy. <laughs> I am excited about our newest project. Um, Wells Fargo donated, donated us a property and we got a lot of things going on at that property right now um, as far as employing people, um, just building structures down there, a whole lot of pallet work going on able to just put some dollars in people's pockets during the um, COVID. And we're looking forward to, um, we get, we have transitional houses. We currently house 14 people. Um, we subleasing apartments and um, just basically getting people from out the homeless um, hotel situation. Um, if I could just give you an example, two families, a man, a woman, a man and a woman stay next door at a, at a hotel. A community member called me and say, hey, they paying almost 600 each a um, week at the hotel and they have children, five of them between them. So we sublease apartment, we get it right, you know, paint it, make sure we got it bed bugs, all those things. And now those same people that was paying 600 a week is for them, they only paying $75 each a week. And they're able to save. They got cars now, um, jobs. And so we look to move them and, and uh, we have other places where we use as boarding houses and we use it for emergency. The place that we have, the Royal Fargo donators, we want to make that be our transitional technology center where people stay in there for a certain amount of time to get their credit right, get their housing right, get their vehicle right, you know, just get their situation together for three to six months and then go on to the next spot. And at the same time, we have a lot of wraparound services at that place at the same time that's it that's not what's going on with us great that is wonderful i remember when you told me that wells fargo um donated donated space to you so i'm really really happy that that is going forward and that you're doing well i'm actually going to recommend somebody um to you that is currently needing some assistance i think that you you most likely will be very helpful for them so i will make sure that i reach out to housing you. oh we um, maxed out we did <laughs> you talking well, about no, housing services in general to kind of help them jobs. move forward. Yeah. Oh, well, we do have some job connections we would like to give people. Not okay. no big time stuff. We have some like right now jobs. If you want to like on um, Waffle House. Okay. You no, know, just connections with the district manager there. And um, over at Staff Zone, even if you got some type of skilled labor, um, the person that dispatches over there. So we just look to get people more, you know, economically sound and economically mobile. Very nice, very nice. Well, I know that you can definitely help this person that I'm thinking about. So I will definitely have her reach out to you and connect you. Um, anybody else want to share what's going on in 2021? Yes, Miss Chloe. Um, so I have like two things. So um, one, I'm, as you, some of you guys may know, I'm 16 um, and I'll be, a gra I'll be graduating um, a year early. 
I'm officially on June 4th. Um, so I'll be graduating high school early and I'm going straight into college. Um, so I'm just kind of going through like the whole college shenanigans, applying <laughs> for school, scholarships, all that extra stuff. And um, I officially just um, signed with um, a distributor um, by the name of Sony and the Orchard. Um, so I officially just signed with them and now all of my music um, will be distributed by them. So oh I'm excited God. about that. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not going to put you on the spot. Yes, of course. Yes, like, like, but, you know, <laughs> as far as you can, but, you know. I'm <laughs> um, I know, Miss Lily, you have to get off in a, in a little bit to go for your board meeting. Anything you want to share for 2021? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to more opportunities for the community. Um, we, Like I said, the past three months, we've been working on our Cape Fear Comprehensive Violence Prevention Strategy. And there's a couple of different programs in the strategy that we've already started working on and implementing. A lot of them are going to force the community to come together and we're gonna be working with local artists. There's going to be like books on the way, there's literature. Um, there's so many different opportunities for the community to get involved, like from like a business aspect to literally like hands-on programming. And I'm all about arts and education, man. So I'm, I'm super, super excited about the potential. And um, then, like I said, LCL is, you know, doing its thing and getting involved in the community and doing some more programming. So I, I mean, every single year I like to naively say, oh, it's going to be the best year. But <laughs> I mean, like this year, there's just so many different opportunities and I've met so many wonderful people and there's different connections. And man, I'm just excited at the, literally the opportunities and the potential, um, Wilmington has a lot going for it. I mean, a lot to make up for, but it's also got a lot going for it. And there's people out there fighting the good fight. And like, I don't know, like, I feel like we've caught like this perfect little ball of energy and I'm here for it. Like, I'm so here for it. <laughs> very nice, very nice. I'm excited for you. I'm excited for you. Anyone else want to share? Film too. So like there's going to be another film coming out. So like in my own personal endeavors. Okay. Gonna, yeah. So it's going to be like Mother's Day dinner will be out soon. And uh -huh. then we start filming another film. Um, if actually we start filming next week. Nice. Nice. I'm, I, I'm, I can't wait to see you on the big screen. I'm going to be like, I know her. <laughs> like, you know, like the streets of city hall to like, you know, conference tables and your know, city council into like a movie. <laughs> Yes, I'm gonna. I, I gotta come out there and like get get you to sign something. So I'd be like, I gotta say that. I'll take a picture. You know, like post COVID when it's safe to travel again. Yes, <laughs> yes we'll like, and then we'll likely like just have a moment of memory, like way before it all happened. <laughs> right, right. Just just don't forget about us little people down here. Oh, no, I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> I love everybody. We're all going together. Like wherever I go, you go. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm gonna hold you to it too. <laughs> All right, Miss Iman. I'm living my dream through Miss House here because I was an actress and you know did all of that stuff, and I took a back seat to to um, push for my daughter. I used to do one woman shows all over, but oh I'm living my dream through you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to watch the movie. Um, so um. Chloe, she mentioned that she has her book coming out um, and that she'll be coming out really soon. Um, she's also been working on an anti-bullying CD. I noticed that um, there is no real music. That it's like the kiddies music, like, you know. <laughs> so she's working on a real anti-bullying CD. Um, you know, we were... Um, uh, we did a GoFundMe. Uh, we, of course, didn't get, you know, enough money to complete it, but we're still working on it. We're believing that God is going to just move some things around. Um, uh, may, you know, Tiffany, the rest don't know that Chloe is a multi-award winner. She's won multiple awards for her activism and what she's done, uh, she's been doing. Um, she was nominated for three awards for the Praise Factors People's True. Not, no, she was nominated for five, right? She was nominated for five and she won three. Um, the Artist Music Guild, she was nominated for three. She won one. And then um, someone else who had won in the same category, she, he took and gave her 
his award. He said, I don't deserve this. You deserve this, Chloe, in front of thousands of people. It was so, when I tell you, it was so uh, emotional. Um, she also won um, a national um, community service award from Ambassador L Dr. Lenore Peterson, which was Barack Obama's ambassador. And the same one in June, coming this June, she will be receiving um, an ambassadorship for humanitarianism. Um, so she'll wow. receive that in June. And then, and <laughs> when, listen, this is what I'm waiting for, y'all. This is what <laughs> There's more? <laughs> When my girl turns 18, are you 18 yet, Chloe? No. She's going to automatically be the youngest one to receive an honorary doctoral, doctoral degree from Stanford University through um, uh, Dr. Lenore Peterson. Yes, she'll be the youngest to receive a doctorate degree. <laughs> Dr. Chloe Olivia, I'm sorry. <laughs> to receive that oh my um, so goodness has, we have a whole bunch of awards over there that she's won um for her activist active oh. um, well mom career. if you're gonna live through anybody that's a uh, i think you picked a great one yes <laughs> congratulations yes. for yes. sure if that it was is worth awesome putting what I, my career on the back burner to um support her and i and and my son i will always do that but that doctoral shit <laughs> Yes. So um, she also um, will be right. Uh, she had a vision board. She wrote a vision. She's doing a lot. So I can't even tell all. She wrote a vision board. And on the vision board, one of the things were for her to, you want to say it, Chloe? I'm um, actually looking at it right now. Um, one of the things on my vision board was, was to, um, to license at least one of my songs in a feature film. Um, and I did that like in October of last year. Um, and wow. I can't say the name yet, but there is a feature um, film. It's a TV show um, that will be coming out very shortly. And I'll be writing a song um, to get licensed out. Oh my goodness. That is, um, <laughs> I mean, mom, you said, you've said it twice that you put your career on the back burner for, for the kids, but I'm telling this, it, this is your career being mom to these superstars um because they can't do it without you yeah. so don't see it as you putting your career on the back burner just see see this as the highlight of your mom career and being a mom is probably the best career you can ever have <laughs> the best, <laughs> the best. Yes. absolutely absolutely yes so, mom. yes mom thank um, you and carla, <laughs> i wanted to share with carla also that this was her second year doing christmas with chloe olivia mm -hmm. We usually gear towards kids that are bullied, low self-esteem, suicidal, and depressed, and so on and so forth. And last year, not last year, the year before, we were able to service over 250 families with Christmas. That was so amazing. It was crazy. Oh, it was wow. crazy. <laughs> we had to do it a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. And so with the donations that we got, we were able to help a family um, that had five, a single mom of five. Um, we were able to, and because of COVID, what we ended up doing with my, my sister, Stephanie, she suggested the Ronald McDonald House. And so we did a lot of our donations to the Ronald McDonald House for the families there um, with six, six children. So we were still able to do something for Christmas with Chloe Olivia and be, and just feel that it, it's better to give than to receive. So yeah, we got a lot of stuff that we've been doing. So, but yeah. That's awesome. That is, that is so amazing. <laughs> that is so amazing. That is so amazing. Um, definitely appreciate you sharing that. That's, it's inspirational too, to see, um, I don't want to say kids, because you're not a kid anymore. You're 16, but you were a kid <laughs> when you started. Um, just to see you, as Mr. Rodney said, out in the community doing so much stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many of our youths that are doing really great things in the community, but it starts with you parents. So just a big up to you, Miss Carla, with your son and you, Miss Yvonne, with Miss Chloe, Mr. Rodney, you know, with saving the children movement and your own children. I mean, it's, it's a big deal. It's a big deal raising advocates in the world that we live in. Um, but it's also really important too. It's also really important too. Miss Carla, I saw you came off mute. Do you want to share something with us? Oh, I, well, I can, oh, but sorry. I think I'm, 
no, I, I was just saying, wow, Chloe, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, I, I, one thing I, I did want to say is that um, I'm on the board of the Alexander Children's Foundation, and uh, the board supports Alexander uh, Youth Network overall, but um, particularly a, a lot of the focus is on the children who are residential in, it's a residential psychiatric um, unit and many of those children are in care, in foster care or, or they were in foster care or they don't have a stable home environment. And so um, we've done things like the angel tree and, and things of that nature, but there's so much there and you talk about kids who have really had a hard way to go. You know, my son, um, when he was six, he tried to die by suicide twice. Mm -hmm. And he was in a, um, the day treatment program at Alexander um, Youth Network. And we went through trauma-focused cognitive behavioral therapy. And he went through it and we went through together. And I can tell you, it enabled him to process his trauma, to share his trauma stories in a way that a six-year-old, seven-year-old could share. And again, it was just life-changing for me. Um, and it got me to a point of saying, you know, I have to do more to help the youth and children in our community. Uh, my son is one child, you know, I adopted this one child who is my heart, you know, I had him since he was 10 days old. Mm -hmm. And it took six, it took six years before I got emergency custody. And that was after he tried to die by suicide twice, and then took another two years uh, to go through the court system. And that was, so I wanted to say to Yvonne, when I was told, Carla, there's no path to you adopting him you have no blood relationship with him, there's no path. I did not accept that. Now, while I can't say my path was the right path, <laughs> it turned out the way it was supposed to be. And uh, he, the adoption was final in 2018, at the end of 2018, and he's 10 now. And like I said, he's helping me with, with this children's journal that we're working on. Um, he's an awesome child and I'm just so thankful to have him. And so as far now to get to my point for 2021, there were two things that I did previously that I was not able to do in 2020 because of COVID. One was an annual event about ending generational trauma and and that was in the spring. I'm hoping to do something, probably not in the spring. And the other, Rodney and uh, C.W. Williams and the National Alliance on Mental Illness and a number of different organizations supported. It was called um, Wellness Rocks. It was a fall family festival. And that was all about mental health, physical health, you know, uh, getting everything from free physicals out to people to, I'll tell you this quick story there was a lady who came and we had a bounce house and her grandson was in the bounce house and he likely had a lot of trauma in his background. And he, you know, when a co common trauma responses are fight, flight or freeze. And my son is a fighter. He doesn't hit like he used to, but he used to hit a lot. And this little boy had he was triggered somehow in the bounce house. And fortunately I had someone there who was able to help him. And the grandmother uh, was just devastated because she didn't know what to do. And fortunately the blessing was that we had a lot of organizations there that support mental health and mental health in youth to be able to get this mom, grandma, some help. Because what I have learned, if I haven't learned anything else in this, eight year journey is that I can ask for help when I need help because I can't do it all myself. I'm not qualified to do it all myself. And so when I need that help, I'm, I'm going to ask for it. And so, you know, that's one thing I love to do is to connect people to services and to connect people to, to support and legit services. So the last thing I will say is so, on February 11th, I am, February 11th, yes, I'm receiving the um, 
Advocacy Award from Mental Health America. I just found out yesterday that I was going to be receiving it. it it's a new award that they came out with in 2019. So I'm really thankful uh, for that. And I feel like it, it's, it's very needed. And, you know, if I can just move the dial a little bit, then, you know, I'll fit, I feel like I, I've made a difference, but connecting with great people like the folks who are on this um, celebration is, it, is something that, that really makes it all worthwhile because there's always more that we can do together. Very nice, very nice. Well, um, I will just share uh, for me for 2020, um, and most of you know that my husband and I started our surrogacy journey um, to have um, a baby. Um, I'm not able to have children anymore, unfortunately, because I had to have a hysterectomy from um, being diagnosed with uh, cancer. I had to have, to have a hysterectomy. But I married a man almost 10 years younger than me with no kids. So <laughs> we decided to um, start our surrogacy journey and we are expecting our baby girl in May um, of this year. So we are really, really excited about that. Um, going to be a mom again after uh, 13 years. The twins just turned 13 on Monday. <laughs> So um, that's what we are looking forward in 2021. Um, and because of that, I've decided to kind of take a rest for the community advocacy part um, with uh, BVP just for a little bit. But um, I see that that's not really gonna go the way I thought it was because I'm still getting phone calls and there's no way that I can turn people away, especially domestic violence victims because that's my, pa my passion. So even though I said I was gonna kind of go back and, you know, take a seat for a minute. I don't see that happening. <laughs> I don't see that happening. So I'm still doing, you know, my advocacy, um, you know, working with the community, not just DV victims anymore. I'm working with the community as a whole in any way, shape or form that I can, any capacity that I can help, I will. Um, we're really just focused on baby girl getting here, getting the family ready, getting the twins ready for being uh, siblings because it's, <laughs> just been them for a while. Um, and um, just really preparing for another journey, another child being being mommy all over again. Um, and just enjoying that. Um, also, if you've been watching my page, I started a, uh, a boutique, a lingerie boutique that has taken off and doing very, very well. Um, so I'm really excited about that to bring some extra income into the house. Um, but also with the Speak Up and Inspire series, we are not going to be doing um, the podcast weekly on Mondays anymore. What we're going to be doing is special platforms. So we're going to be talking about some serious issues. We're going to be talking to some serious people and we're going to be addressing some very serious topics. And so in doing that, I'm having to schedule multiple people because we're going to be doing a lot of platforms where there's going to be multiple people talking about these topics or talking about these issues. So um, make sure that you like our Facebook page, the Speak Up and Inspire series, so that you can see who we're going to be talking to and what we're going to be talking about, um, because we are going to be get, hitting on some, some, some hard things this year, because there's so much going on in the community. Um, and I'm really looking forward to talking about some harder topics. Um, the last two years, we focused on the community leaders, the advocates in the community. We're not going to stop doing that. But what we are going to be doing is we're going to be talking more about issues and more about topics and more about things that are really affecting our community um, and bringing in those community, those community leaders and those advocates and just our, our neighbors who want to talk about it and who want to do something about it. So that's going to be our, our focus this year on the SUIS. Um, and I'm really looking forward to it. I've already written down some topics to get everybody on our platform tonight back on the podcast. I've been, if y'all been seeing me writing, busy, making sure, um, because y'all have brought up a lot of things, a lot of topics, um, a lot of uh, announcements going on. We got graduations, we got movies coming out, we got awards, we have books, we have so much stuff going on right here tonight. <laughs> and I want to make sure that I continue to support everybody that is that is on tonight, um, as I hope you will continue to support me. Um, so as I said, drum roll, as I said, we are going to be having um, special guests 
um, every podcast that we have. And it's going to be surprise guests. You're not going to know about them unless they tell you. Um, because it's going to be based off a of Facebook post. So we're going to be trying to, when we talk about serious topics, we want to talk about something to, to brighten up the mood by the end of the podcast. Because, you know, these topics can get, get a little daunting sometimes, but they need to be talked about. So tonight we have Mr. Excitement, um, Mr. Brandon Chuck Brown, who is going to tell us about his movement that he has going on right now that is for a good cause. And... He can't, I can't hear. hear you. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes. No. <laughs> okay. Some reason it went down. Okay. All right. Let's see. Um, let me see if I can chat you. Let me see. Um, so, so I'm not breaking it up, but Brandon. It was up for a little while, but then it went down. Go ahead. Okay, so Brandon, go ahead and tell us about the movement that you have started on Facebook. Um, well, it's on Facebook, IG, LinkedIn. It's basically the Black Men Leaders Challenge. So what we're doing, like the Black men that are in the community, the Black men that are in uh, the neighborhood, the Black men that may be in the household, that's making a change in your life or you see them inspiring maybe kids, adults, however, um, you know, we're, we're posting women, we're encouraging uh, women to acknowledge those black men that are doing things around them that they see. Um, you know, I, I feel like, uh, and I, I say this all the time and me and you have even talked about that. Um, I feel that women are the biggest boost for men. And, you know, I, I feel like it's been divided so many years, you know, with women empowerment and all these type of things that it was only right to try to empower black males, right? Mm -hmm. So what better way to empower black males than the opposite sex empowering them and saying, I see what you're doing. I see you, you're doing a great job. Continue to do the great work in the neighborhood because women have been asking for years, where are the men at? Where are the men at? Where are the men at? <laughs> well, you have a chance to acknowledge where the men at. You know, whether it's one to, to, two, to two men, it's still men that's out here that's doing something and they need to, and they, they need to know that you see them. That's all. Very nice, very nice. Um, I was um, interested in hearing about this because you know we have um, Miss, you know Miss Carla who just wrote her book, her book Journey to the Sun. We have Miss um, Yvonne who was talking about her son who was bullied in school and how her and her husband are not going to sit down and just let let that be. Um, we have you, uh, Chuck, on here. That's who's always in the community, who's always supporting others, who's always doing for others. And we have Mr. Ronnie who's doing the same. He's very active in the community. He's working with our children. He's advocating for our children and families. Um, so there are a lot of great men. There are a lot of great black men in the community. There are a lot of great African-American men in the community. However you want, however you want to call it, there are. There are a lot of great men in the community. So I wanted to make sure that we gave you um, the spotlight tonight because we wanted to hear, hear about it. So what are the steps for the challenge? What do, what do the women need to do? Basically, um, how many of the men that you know that, uh, that are doing something in the community or household, you basically do a video. It don't have to be long, 30 seconds or more. Um, doesn't have to be a real long, lengthy video, but you just give them credit. You send them to me and I'll post them. Okay, so send them to you and post them or do you want them to post them and tag you or you want them to- Yeah, them? either way they can, they can send them to me or they can tag me in the post. A lot of females are tagging me in the post and what I do is I just steal them mm -hmm. and I put them because I wanna put them on other pages as well. So, you know, other um, outlets can look at it. Okay, great. So it will probably be best to make sure that they send it to you anyway, but also post and tag you. Yeah. Nice, Correct. nice. And then I saw some hashtags. Which hashtags should they use? Black men leaders. 
Black men leaders. Got it. Black That's men all. leaders. Okay, nice. So everybody, if you're out there and you're listening, um, Mr. Brandon Chuck Brown, I believe that's what you are on Facebook, correct? Yeah. Okay. If you want to be a part of the challenge, I'm challenging everybody that's watching right now um, to go ahead and do it. Go ahead and jump on your social media, do the um, Black Men Leaders Challenge. It doesn't have to be a long, lengthy video. It can be 30 seconds or less, but talk about the Black men in your life. Shout shout one out, tag them, tag, tag Chuck. Make sure that you use the hashtag Black Men Leaders um, and just put it out there. Um, we're in the climate right now where we're still being attacked as African-Americans and we need to be able to show that we have positive role models in our community, starting with our Black men. So definitely thank you for sharing that. While you're sharing, Brandon, tell us about you. Tell us what your organization is. Tell us what your passions are so we can learn more, a little bit more about you. Ooh, boy, it's so much, but um, <laughs> you, got you know, in, two, <laughs> in 2015, I started an organization called the Single Saved and Serious Movement which was basically about um, being single, saved, and serious and having a relationship with God, dating, um, you know, how do you have a relationship with God, but dealing with dating at the same time. Um, so I launched that off through over 200 events within three years. Um, so now we're going basically in the community um, based off of UNNOC. I've been called to the community. So I brought, uh, you know, the single saved and serious movement out to support these parents that are grieving, right? There are single parents out here that are grieving from gun violence, you know, from parent, from their kids getting killed. So I support that on that end. Um, I've partnered with Stephanie Harrison with Stop Killing Our Children. I've partnered with Seven Dog Yet. Uh, Willard, Willardine on Facebook with um, MM2K. Um, and then on Sundays, I'm with my cousin Shakita of Another Chance House of Refuge. And what we're doing, we're catering to the homeless community in Matthews. Uh, you've been out there a couple of times. So um, basically, for right now, especially since COVID, we're supporting the community um, and making sure that that parents are loved and parents are cared for. You know, it's a lot going on with COVID um, with, you know, the housing, you know, um, people are homeless, can't find homes, you know, affordable housing, there's no affordable housing. Um, and the murder rate last year was over 125 murders in Charlotte. So we're trying to tackle those issues as well as just making sure that parents know that they are loved and, you know, God loves them. So, um, you know, that's what I do. And then Mr. Excitement, Marketing and Media Management, that's basically working with artists, Mr. Excitement and friends. So, uh, Kia Canada, I work with the Kia Canada, the hottest gospel artist out right now two-time uh, Queen City Award winner. She's also nominated in Hinesville, Georgia at the uh, K Praise Gospel Fest that's going on March 18th and 19th. And she'll be nominated for four different categories in the gospel uh, arena. I work with Minister T Breeze. He's a, um, he won Queen City Awards uh, male gospel artist of the year 2019 and he was nominated again this year shout out to mr dark eye dj blessed um we all know dj blessed from uh you know being in the community he was nominated this year i worked with him he was nominated for dj of the year um nakiska j who a lot of y'all haven't heard about she's out of gastonia now and she is amazing so You'll be hearing a lot from her in the near future. Uh, Trino Rochi, you know, we had that can't wait challenge. Um, he's a monster right now. He's on fire right now. He has a track out with Rich Dunk called Bank Rose. And he also has another single out right now called Never Fold. Rich Dunk is with the Billion Dollar Baby 
Entertainment. So he's one of the baby's artists, and he's featured on uh, Trino Rachi's single called Bank Rose. So, yeah. I can't hear you. I can't hear y'all. Tiffany, you're on mute. Okay. Tiffany's on mute. Oh, there we go. That's why you, you can't hear me. I'm like, why can't you hear me? I'm sorry. Okay, so thank you, Brandon, for coming on and being our special guest tonight. I truly, truly appreciate you. As always, any kind of way I can find to support you, I am, especially when it's for a good cause. You've always supported me as well, as well as Cedric with um, family. So definitely appreciate you. Please make sure you give your wife hugs and kisses for me and tell her that I said hello. Um, Don't worry. <laughs> good. Don't worry about it. Thank you. Thank I got gotcha. you. <laughs> so I appreciate everybody for coming on tonight. Um, Ms. Carla, thank you so much for doing all that you're doing in the community. Congratulations on your awards that are coming up. You definitely deserve it. Um, right now, we're going to pick a winner for um, getting your book, Journey to the Sun. So I'm actually going to let you, if you want to, or do you want me to, to to say who the winner is up to you if you want to pick somebody or i can pick somebody you can pick you can okay pick. so i'm yeah. gonna pick i'm gonna pick somebody so it looks like we have um let me go on my page so i can see all right, so I am going to pick, and hopefully she doesn't have your book already, but it's going to be Miss uh, Depeka Dave. Miss Depeka Dave, you are going to win, or you are winning, a copy of Miss Carla's book, Journey to the Sun. So I will reach out to you and make sure that you get your book, Miss um, Miss Dave. Um, I know her; she's an advocate in the community as well. Um, she was one of the first names that popped up, so that is our winner tonight of the Journey to the Sun book by Miss Carla. Um, Miss Chloe, I know you have a book coming out. I don't think I caught the title. Um, what is the title of your book and when is it coming out? Um, so we're going to push for um, probably around like February, March. Okay. Um, and it's going to be, uh, it's entitled hashtag talk about it. Um, so we want we Got want it. you guys to look out for that title. It's going to be very colorful. Y'all know me. I love my colors. So it's okay. going to be pretty colorful. Um, but y'all just look out for that um, and, you know, go on my Instagram and, you know, just, you know, stay updated. My Instagram is at the Chloe Olivia. I'm not putting in the plug, but um, my Instagram is at the Chloe Olivia and just follow me um, and I, I'll keep you guys updated on um, everything that's going out. Um, I'm going to start doing um, just stay more consistent in like posting and doing lives and stuff like that for you guys. Very nice. Very nice. Well, I want to make sure that um, around February, March, that I connect back with you so we can talk about your book um, and we can get some of our lucky um, viewers and or guests to be able to get a copy of your book because we want to make sure that we're supporting you as well. Um, so I'm just going to shout out really quick um, the beauties of my lingerie uh, boutique, Love and Less Lingerie. Um, I told them that I was going to shout them out because they are doing an excellent job um, promoting Love and Lust and just being just beautiful spirits. I started Love and Lust to, to empower women to embrace their bodies and to promote um, body positivity. I'm a thick girl, you know, I, I deal with my weight all the time, um, I have issues with my weight all the time. And so I started Love and Lust to just empower women to embrace their bodies, to feel good about themselves. And so I just wanted to shout out the beauties of Love and Lust. Um, we have several that have been with us since we started, um, who have continued with us in 2021. So if you would like to see more of our boutique and what we have to offer, we have men's items too. Go to www www.loveinlustlingerie.com. It's L-O-V-E, the letter N, lust, lingerie.com. Um, and you can use my code, Sunshine, to get 15% uh, off right now. Watch out for Valentine specials and new items. It's not just lingerie. We have pajamas. We have um, 
like apparel, we have all kinds of things. So that's what's going on new in 2021 for me. The SUIS is gonna be due to hitting on some hard topics this year. So I hope that you will continue to turn, tune in, turn, tune in <laughs> in 2021. And please like our Facebook page, Speak Up and Inspire series to find out who we're gonna be talking to and what we're gonna be talking about. So everybody have a great night. Thank you, Ms. Carla, for continuing to be on with us tonight. Ms. Chloe, Ms. Yvonne, thank you for staying on with us the whole time. Thank you, Ms. Lily, for joining us and then getting with your board meeting. I know that's important. Thank you so much, Mr. Brandon Chuck Brown, for coming in and telling us about the Black Men Leaders Challenge, making sure I'm saying it right. Ladies, please go and post about those positive Black men in your community and use hashtag make sure I get it right, Black men leaders. Please make sure you do that. And Mr. Rodney, as always, I will never, never forget our first interview on the podcast. You said, it's not just about me. It's not just about you. If we all unite, we can make a bigger difference. So thank you. Thank you so much for being on our two-year anniversary. And we will see you on January 25th. We are going to be talking to men in the community that have gone through reform, who have been incarcerated, and who are now community leaders, business owners, and helping the community. So that's what we're going to be talking about on January 25th at 7 p.m. Please make sure that you tune in. I love you. I love you all. And everyone, have a great night.